Hi, my name is Gurpreet Singh and I'm working at the Executive Sous Chef in Royal Lancaster, London, a five-star hotel near uh, Lancaster Gate Hotel uh, Station. Um, I'm brought up in Mumbai. I did my education in hospitality management from there also. Uh, we're going to cook uh, the rack of pork uh, crusted with pistachios and some herb. I'm going to cook it first in a, in a sous vide style, very slow cooking on a 62 degree temperature for nearly 90 minutes. I'm going to accompany it with the little millet uh, porridge. It's a, it's a super grain uh, rice alternative I'm going to be using, uh, having some peas in it. A little green porridge will be spiced uh, with the garam masala, a little bit of Indian spice touch to it. Um, also, I'm going to have some root vegetables. Uh, pickled apple, Granny Smith apple, and uh, the jew. I like cooking uh, with pork. I like cooking sous vide. Uh, sous vide does its uh, justice to the the end product of the uh, of what you're cooking. Pork rack is usually very dry uh, uh, food, dry meat. So to have an end product a bit more juicy, I'm going to cook it in a so. Uh, cooking method. Uh, I crush it with the herb because it's a, it's a fatty meat, it needs a bit more flavor on it. I'm serving porridge with it, which is made of little millet. Uh, people are very, uh, very much conscious about health, people are uh, watching what they're eating, so the, what ca carbs they're eating, how much of nutrients, uh, what is the nutrition value of their food. So to make it a bit more healthy, I'm using uh, uh, little millet. And because I'm cooking it for the students, it's good to introduce another ingredient, uh, which they may have seen it, but not all of them. So I wanted to bring it. Mille is a, um, um, is a really cooked like rice, tastes like rice, but it's not the rice. And um, my um, uh, choice of using pickled apple is to actually cut the acidity, uh, add the acidity and cut the fattiness of the pork. Um, to add the element of vegetables, I'm using shantane carrot and uh, uh, purple radishes. So again, purple radish is not very commonly used and seen in the market. So I wanted to bring it in my plate to showcase that there are different types of vegetables available in this season. It's, it's a small machine which actually controls the temperature of the water. Uh, the heat. The idea is to cook the meat uh, slowly. Uh, the disintegration process and the molecular process in the meat is uh, in a very slow uh, timing. And because the food is already packed in the vacuum pack bag, there is no loss of flavor, there is no loss of juices, there is no loss of um, taste. And I always prefer cooking slow food. Um, from where I come in India, most of the dishes are done overnight cooking, overnight marination. Uh, we don't have to rush the food. Let it cook on its own time. Let it cook calmly. And the end results are definitely good. And when you will see the meat, um, it's quite uh, chunky meat. I'm using the uh, rack, which is the best end of the loin. Uh, the eye meat is quite thick. so. It goes very monotonous if you're eating the meat. Adding the crust brings in a bit more character to the to the meat, to the plate, and some freshness because I'm using some herb. I'm using pistachio. Pistachio is a, a bit of a nutty and a fresh um, uh, nut, which gives another you know taste profile. This crust usually just enhances the overall experiences. So you're not just biting in the meat. You when you're taking a bite, you may come across a nut, you may come across a herb. So there's a, there's a good rendezvous of the flavors in your mouth when you're actually eating them. Millet is cooked traditionally. You soak it for some time. Um, 15 minutes is, is a minimum. You should be soaking it, but the longer you soak, the, the better it is. Again, what you are making out of it. If you just want to make it like rice and it should be not be sticky and it should be like grainy and separated then you just soak it for 15-20 minutes and then you cook it soaking water does not matter how much you put water but while cooking it if you want to cook it in the absorption method you use double the quantity of water and if you the way i'm doing it i'm going to use 2.5 times of the water because i'm making a porridge out of it which is a bit more sticky and, and 
you add some it's very bland otherwise it has its husky um, taste uh, like rice or the wild rice but then if you want to add some flavor you can add to it i try to add a bit more sharp flavors to it so that it does not go too boring when you are eating it so that's why i'm using garam masala so it's it's a sequence you you have soaked the millet and then you have cooked it separately then you start the tempering we call it the tempering process you heat some oil and add some cumin when the cumin is crackling and giving you given out its flavor and smoky uh, 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 fragrance to the oil you add ginger and garlic the ginger and garlic you add you saute you keep cooking it till they go soft and little golden brown you are not making too brown it unless you do it for the curry so they go a little soft and then you add your shallots you cook it and you cook it till the shallots are translucent they start giving out the oil you add your spice you add you add the garam masala i prefer to add a little bit of chili flake that's why i put in my recipes which students are going to be using i put optional i like it to be a little bit spiked with chili and then you add a bit of a chili flakes in there and you saute you add your vegetables any vegetable you want to put here i have only mentioned pea and chestnut chestnut because it's a bit seasonal and then a bit uh, nutty in the uh, nature so you add chestnut and peas you mix your millet cook millet in that nicely toss adjust the seasoning and make sure you get the right consistency if you need more water to adjust the consistency you adjust it people put cream and milk also if you want to go that way but i'm just putting water today to have a right consistency uh, what i want tempering is you know any most of the dishes especially in south east uh, side especially in the southern side of india or uh, you heat oil you crackle the whole spices so they do not get completely dissolved in the dish so you heat oil you crackle the whole spices then you add just you pour it over your anything you're making if it is a a dal or anything which you are especially it's mostly used for pulses and cereals to give them a, a, a to enhance its profile otherwise when you're boiling and you're cooking it with with the spices is one thing but giving it a tempering give it some bit of a nutty and smoky flavor and taste to the dish granny smith apple is is a, the, one of the best to use for the pickle this pickle is not a long process pickle it's it's you can go, be you can do it in just one hour you make the pickling liquid pickling brine slice your apple as the thinner you slice it the better pickle it gets and leave the apple in the brine and within 6 50 60 minutes your apple is ready um the, it does not only bring the acidity to the plate it brings some fruitiness also and some you know healthiness in the plate so it's a, it's a one stop for all i like shantane carrots i like baby vegetable well because what they do is they bring the whole uh, structure of the vegetable in the plate if i'm using big carrots or anything i cut i may only get the core i may only get the top but shantane carrots are a very um uh, crisp and sweet texture and taste i like it you do not have to necessarily peel it just uh, top and tail if you don't want to top and tail that also fine wash it wash it scrub it saute it it's a nice bite when you're having your food same is with 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 the, with the uh, parsley herbs uh, what you call it sorry radish same is with the radish i use purple radish i saw in them in the market the other day i thought why should why don't i try this to showcase to the students that you can use it the choice of vegetables can be anything it's season of roots vegetable i like to put it in my plate to show that yes yes that's a very interesting one i studied my hospitality management and catering technology at, along with applied nutrition from mumbai india uh, in there to be a good chef you have to be qualified as well along with having an industrial experience i worked for jw marriott in mumbai uh, renaissance in mumbai and then i was always interested in learning continental cuisine 
and you know that the, wherever you go, the, if they are using the different cuisine from the different part of the world, there is some kind of the regional touch to that. For for me to have an, um, the first hand exposure of the continental cuisine, I I decided to move to England, and then I uh, then I came here. I started working in Birmingham, and. I work for the smaller hotels and I realized that no, uh, if I have to grow up in my career and have to have a bit more solid exposure of, about culinary in, in Europe, I should be working in London. So I moved to London. Um, I work for most of the premium brands, uh, Hilton, Marriott, Sheraton, Intercontinental and trying to be do my bit uh, in the culinary world. I would say uh, when I was in my comic state, I was taught one thing is that try to make it good, do not make it easy. When you make it good, it becomes easy automatically because you repeatedly keep doing it. And second thing is loving food is very, very important. It's not a profession. It's not, it's not just an, uh, a career. It's actually your life. You're going to live around food and because we are uh, dealing with one of the most basic uh, need of the mankind human being so we should be uh, very honest and uh, uh, sincere towards it the guest is not watching you what you're doing but you yourself are watching so the honest food um, uh, should go out and learning is an eternity we all keep learning i'm still learning there's still more so we, we none of us can have, ever say i've done my bit I will not lie to you, I was not uh, very good in Indian cooking when I was in India. My trust and my love towards Indian culinary came in when I came here. When I saw the food, food people are cooking and calling it Indian food, I was like, that gave me a bit of a shake up. Now, no, I said, I said, I have to uh, put on some, some nice Indian food as well in the plate. And then I started mixing things to get it's the, there is no regional right for people or, or cuisines to have no this can go on only in this cuisine so I started mixing things I started kind of a, I wouldn't call it fusion but yeah I try to give some touch Indian cuisine is huge we have around 26 states and there are many cuisines from that part so there's the herbs and spices the, the, the flowers I mean here we see refined flour and white flour and pasta flour but you, we have around seven to eight types of flour back there so yes, this is where I wanted to uh, add a bit of a, a spice touch to this dish and millet, I like it because it's hidden somewhere, it's not still on the map of the, uh, the world culinary, so, but it's very healthy. The, it's very rich in iron, very low glycemic index, so for people who have diabetes and um, you know type 2 sugar or type 1, they can also have it without having any fear of you know their sugar level fluctuating with that so the ingredients who have some qualities from the health and nutrition perspectives should be brought forward and that's the reason i am doing this dish